Hi everyone, this is Kathy Grosskirk with Bookkeeping Clean and Simple and this is week four of my series on what's new in QuickBooks Online 2023 recertification and what you need to know. And we are focusing on the intermediate skills area which is part of the basic certification. I will cover the advanced skills later on for those of you needing the advanced certification, but for those of you doing the basic recertification, you will only need to focus on this first section right here, which is the intermediate skills. And we've already covered topics one and two. Now today, my focus is gonna be on topics three and four, the new features in the banking center and creating and using bank rules in QuickBooks Online. So let's go ahead and click on topic three real quick. And there's basically a couple of new features that they're gonna be talking about in here. We're gonna talk about the categorization history feature and the bank feeds image feature. So let's scroll down to here. And like I said, all this training is in your training portal and it's all free. So with that being said, basically one of the things that they want you to know is that there's a way to categorize something that has been categorized in the past. But one of the things that you need to know, and this is real important, is that as long as you have a vendor or customer selected, you'll be able to see this categorization history link. So let me scroll down a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. You have to have something within this area, like a payee assign or put in there in order for you to be able to see where it says categorization history below. And then once you do that, you can click on it see if it'll let you but, but anyway you'll be able to click on it and and see a listing of the the history and and then be able to categorize it from there here let's switch over here and you'll see what i'm talking about once you click on that link this is what you'll see you'll be able to filter by most used i've done some videos on this already too so if you want to look at that you can but basically one of the things you want to know for the test, and like I said, I can't give any answers out, but you wanna know how to access this. And so it's very important to understand that. So let's go ahead and go on down to the next area. We're gonna talk about the bank feeds image feature. Now this is basically where you can actually see copies of checks or deposits even. I haven't seen any deposit slips come through, but I've actually seen check images. And it's not with all banks right now. But basically what you need to know is when you're looking at this, is you need to know how are the deposit or check images acquired? How do check and deposit images come through the bank feed and how you can use that information on the images to help categorize transactions? Well, a lot of this should be obvious but basically I have clients that will write checks but they do not enter them in QuickBooks Online so they come through the bank feed and you're left guessing well what are these for so having these images are helpful so as you can see they come through the bank feed as attachments here I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and so this number right here is a hot link so what happens is when you click on that number you'll actually see the check image appears. So you can zoom in on these and you can also do other stuff with them. So you've got to know what you can do with these images also when you actually see them. So that's something else to remember when you're going through, through this. So anyway, here's a list of all the things that you can do the following with, with that. So it's probably good to know these things because you might get asked this question. I'm not saying you will, but you might get this, asked this question on the test. So anyway, that's all for this topic. And let's switch over to the second topic real quick. And so now we're gonna talk about creating and using bank rules in QuickBooks Online. So I'm gonna go ahead and click into that topic really quick. And basically this is new training that they're doing on bank rules. So basically when we're looking at this area, we're looking at basically how do bank rules work we also need to understand which accounts the transactions will be in, defining rule conditions, defining what actions QuickBooks Online should take, using the auto add feature, saving the rule, and how QuickBooks Online applies rules. And we're gonna spend a little bit more time on that because that's kind of new protocols that they put in. 
reviewing transactions with rules and using rules compared to using recurring transactions. So that's also another area that we'll probably touch on real quick. So anyway, you need to know how bank rules work. It goes into all of that in here. And you're going to also specify which accounts the transactions will be in. You'll also need to understand that transactions in and transactions out, you'll have to create separate rules for, for those, okay? And it talks about that right here as well. So you have to do money in or money out transactions separately, even though it may be for the same payee or whatever. So anyway, you also have to know how to define the rule conditions. It talks about deciding which criteria to use, what happens if you tell the rule to match transactions by description or bank text, all those different things. I've done trainings on some of these already, so I'm not going to go into all these. One thing I will mention here is that you can have as many as five conditions in a single rule, and that's something you might also need to be aware of when you're doing all this. And then also it talks about what actions the rule should take and how to determine all of that. So you can either do assign or exclude when you're doing that. And it talks about all that in here. And then these are the transaction types, depending on if you've got money coming in or money going out. So that might be something you might want to be aware of as well. And all this stuff in here is probably good to know uh, see where uh, are we at here. So using the auto add feature, it talks about some of the caveats with that. So you want to know those as well. And when we get to, and it talks about saving the rule. And you can also create rules from other rules that you've established. But what, the other thing that you want to know is you want to know how QuickBooks Online applies the rules. And there's been some changes in the protocols for that. So first of all, it looks for whether or not there's a match and then do any bank rules apply. It used to be that the bank rules superseded any matches, but now it looks like that matches supersede any bank rules. So that, that's kind of an improvement in that area. So there's other training about rules, including reviewing transactions with rules. And also, if, if you don't have an auto add assigned to the rule, you'll see it in the for review section of your banking center. So that might be something to remember as well. And then you also might want to review this stuff on using rules compared to using recurring transactions. So it talks about the different scenarios where it would be better to use a bank rule versus using a recurring transaction. So I will leave that information up here just for a little bit. But like I said, you can go through the training and do that. So basically, that's all I have today. Let's go back to the main screen here for next time. I'm going to cover sections five and six together. That's new training on reports and forms, a new training on period and activities. And then the last section I will do under the intermediate is covering this enhanced option for migrating clients from QuickBooks Desktop because I'm going to spend a total undivided attention on this one topic since that's going to be real important. So anyway, I hope this helps you. Y'all take care and have a wonderful day. We will see you real soon. Thank you for watching. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and share it with others. My goal is to publish at least one new video per week on QuickBooks desktop or online topics, the occasional motivational video, and a few surprises thrown in here and there. I would love to talk to you about how to help you optimize your knowledge and usage of QuickBooks Desktop or Online. My Calendly link is in the slide. Please use that to reach out to me to schedule a free 45-minute initial consult. I would love to talk to you about your QuickBooks Desktop or Online training needs. Again, have a wonderful day, and until next time, we'll see you soon. Take care.